pick slanting works and pick slanting can improve your playing. Well, at least it has improved my playing a lot in the last couple of years. And today I'm going to show you a lick where I can perfectly demonstrate how pick slanting changed my precision and my speed. Here we go. Hey Guitar Champion, what's going on? I'm Justin Hombach, back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video. You may have realized it. Yes, the lick that I just played was from Universal Mind by the band Liquid Tension Experiment, which guitar player is none other than the legendary John Petrucci. I Before God. I discovered the technique of pick slanting, I struggled a lot playing this lick. The speed, the accuracy, the precision, the complexity, Everything was kind of really weird for me. But after I finally understood the pick slanting technique, a lot of doors opened for me, new possibilities and new ways for these kind of complex licks. Now this worked extremely for me in my playing, but this does not necessarily mean that it will also work for your playing. Though still I deeply believe that for most of the guitar players out there, the pick slanting technique really can be a benefit and really can improve their playing a lot. And for me there were several situations in my career now that proved for me, hey, this pick slanting thing is not just a marketing tool and name to sell online masterclasses or whatnot. This really helped my playing being more precise, faster and just better. So let's check out today's lick and let's compare from how I would play it in 2017 and how I would play it now. Because there's a difference and you will definitely understand the logic behind this difference and why my current approach through pick slanting is so much more useful. If you are not familiar with the pick slanting technique at all, then check out these videos here. I made a playlist about all my picking videos from this channel and especially the ultimate guide for speed picking. I highly recommend one hour long video all about picking technique. So the lick is actually for the left hand pretty easy. And today I don't want to focus too much on the left hand. Today it's all about the right hand. But if you want to have the tabs for today's lick, then you can find them in the description box. There's a link where you can download them. And if you want to support this channel, then leave the like, leave a subscribe, hit the bell, the notification bell and leave a nice comment. And if you don't leave a nice comment, then I'm going to delete it. All right. Let's start with today's lick. Here we go. And let's change to a camera angle that is perfect for our right hand in three, two, one. Boom. All right, so now I am a natural downward pick slanter. So before I discovered two-way pick slanting, I was holding my pick always in this kind of angle. Now, and I would play this lick as well with this kind of angle a few couple of years ago. Would look like this. And up to tempo it would look and sound like this. Like shit. And I'm not over exaggerating here. What is the problem now? Well the problem occurs already in the first few notes. I'm playing down up, then I have the string skip to the G string and here I'm playing down up down and now I want to go from the G to the E string again. Now the problem is that after I have downstroked the last note on the G string, my pick is down here, it needs to go this way to the E string. And this is really tricky doing it fast. It is possible by only playing those six notes. But the longer the lick went, the more complex it gets and then mm, it's hardly doable. You can brute force, of course, this. You can brute force nearly every bad habit in a technique. But for me, pick slanting is the definition of work smart, not hard when it comes to guitar playing, which is kind of unusual for me, for my personality, but 
Here it's the first time in my life that I ever did something like this, where I worked smart, not hard. Because by just simply changing my pick angle, you see where the tip of my pick is now, and that I can easily go from the G to the E string without a lot of movement. So again, only downward. Pick is here and has to go this way. With upward pick slant. Pick is here and is really close to the E string. Why shouldn't this work? The first time I realized this, it's really incredible. And it helped me for so many licks. But not only it helped me a lot, it helped a lot of guitar players out there as well. And this brings me to our today's sponsor, which is me, Justin Hombach. Because I've created an online masterclass which is called the Zen of Speed Picking. In the Zen of Speed Picking you will find more than 50 other exercises and examples on how you can train not only the pick slanting technique but also picking speed in general, string skipping, interesting picking patterns and leaks for your solo and much much more. But get it now because I'm currently working on the Zen of Speed Picking 2.0, a relaunch of the Zen of Speed Picking because there's so much I've learned in the last two years since I've released it and I want to share this knowledge of course with you guys. And there will be also more musical etudes that make a lot of fun, songs, workouts and even more licks. So get it now because the sale that I have going on currently is going to be away when the Zen of Speed Picking 2.0 is launching this summer. Check out the link in the description box and get the Zen of Speed Picking. Alright, let's continue with our lick. After we have reached the E string, now we have to change again. Because what happens when I stay with this so-called upward pick slanting lick? I'm again stuck in between strings. So here now, I have to change to downward again. So we have downward, up, downward. And this now works fast also a lot better. Now one question that often occurs is when do I change and there are two different versions. There's one the snap movement where I'm taking for example the last note in a line and I use this last note to change the pick slant only in that direction. Like for example when I play picking licks like those, there I use the last note to make the pick slant change, the same descending and this comes from a lick which I call the Paul Gilbert lick. You can find this lick in the Land of Speed Picking. And then there is the way where you have more time on your hand and you change gradually from one pick slant direction to the next pick slanting direction. In this kind of lick I more use the second version how to change the pick slant. So it is more like Like this, gradually over the three notes, I go from down to upward. Now, while the lick continues, we're only playing two notes on the G string, which means, because there's a certain rule that is called when you have an even number of notes per string, you stay with the last pick slanting direction. When you have an uneven number of notes per string, you have to change the pick slanting direction. So in this case, after we are starting with downward pick slanting, and now we only play two notes on the G string, so here we are staying with downward pick slanting. And then we have again three notes on the D string, uneven number of notes, so we are changing again to upward pick slanting. Otherwise, when we're staying with downward, I would stuck between the strings again. I don't want that, so I use upward pick slanting. Now this is the rule that you have to remember always when you are checking out licks. When I have an uneven number of notes per string, I have to change the pick slanting direction. Do I start with a downstroke and I have an uneven number of notes per string? I also start with upward pick slanting. Do I start with a downstroke and I have even number of notes per string? I start with downward pick slanting. Do you start with an upstroke? You're probably doing something wrong. I never start with an upstroke. No, it depends of course if you're using RDAP 
rhythmically depending alternate picking, a method by Martin Miller. But this situation did not really often come in speed picking. In speed picking, we often start on a beat where I suggest to start with downstroke. So it doesn't matter which kind of lick, I always start with a downstroke. You need a little bit more practice. Sometimes you have to include inside picking and instead of outside picking, but it's all doable. Okay, now another tip for you to work on your right hand and to see and to really feel how Pixland can change your playing is by only playing the right hand. So mute with your left hand the strings and then try to play. You will realize this is much harder than you think, only playing the right hand. But this is one of the best tips that I always can give when you want to work on the independency and the control of your right hand by just taking a pattern and playing it with only the right hand. All right, so I hope you have seen how and why pick slanting can help and improve your playing a lot. Work smart, not hard, especially when it comes to guitar playing. So now maybe you will realize something when watching live versions from Universal Mind. Because Petrucci's picking playing has changed a lot to the worse. And this is something where I'm going to talk about in my next video. So subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to see my video about how Petrucci's picking technique changed over the years. All right, I hope you like this little video about pick slanting and the cool lick from the Universal Mind song. I hope I'm going to see you in my next video. Cheers so far, stay progress, goodbye.